Computer. Compose new entry. Heaven's Gate Hotel. Initial review. Oliver Percy. December 23rd, 2099. We arrived at Heaven's Gate and after settling in, were offered a tour of the facilities. A summation of my notes are as follows. Hotel. The Art Deco style and decor is, without a doubt, incredible. Beautifully imagined and perfectly realized, it meshes very nicely with the dome layout of the hotel's substructure and sets a very bold and elegant initial impression. The rooms themselves are fairly large, maybe not extravagant if compared to some of the larger luxury resorts back on Earth, but they completely trounce the idea of small and cramped sleeping pods that I was half expecting to find. Staff. Admittedly, the concept of an all-robotic staff sounds equal parts intriguing and daunting. And, in actuality, it does take quite a bit of getting used to, especially since their creators at Gemini Industries haven't yet been able to perfectly replicate all the subtle facial expressions and body language that we're accustomed to expect from other humans. Still, a completely automated and self-sufficient hotel is a technological marvel, and they've done an admirable job achieving that goal. Note, the slight unease of their quirky mannerism lessens when you remember that they've literally been programmed to serve you. Food. The dining experience of any resort is of critical importance, and here we meet our first mixed bag. There is only one in-resort restaurant and only one bar, which means there's currently only one restaurant on the entire moon. I've been told more planned, so while that is to be taken into consideration for future stays, I can only give my experience, which is that it is currently very limited. Consider this the low point of the review, with a chance of getting better in the future. The preparation and presentation of the dishes felt very generic, and quite obviously robotic. Like we are missing the signature touch of a master chef. The menus are also rather limited, especially for the only place you'll eat for the duration of your stay. Still, portion sizes are good, food is tasty, and the fact that each dish has some ingredients that were grown on the moon adds enough novelty to give it some charm. Add to that the large glass dome that encompasses the restaurant, and you'll find the perfect ambiance to contemplate your place in the galaxy while you wait for your order of Selena scones. Amenities. Here's where Heaven's Gate truly shines. It boasts a full slate of unique activities to enjoy during your stay, including lunar rover rides, space walks, low G swimming, a classical theater room, a greenhouse, several small garden reflection rooms, a small museum devoted to meteorites, an observatory, and countless opportunities for stargazing. Summary. This is a bold, sleek, and risky endeavor with a lot of guts and determination. It's an illegal all of its own, and should be a bucket list destination for any adventurous traveler. This has been all over with Oliver, and until I talk to you again, keep exploring. Full disclosure, Heaven's Gate Resort and Hotel provided me with a complimentary stay in exchange for an honest and fair review. My thoughts are my own, and I was not compensated to change my opinions. My followers know I would never agree to that. End. Here it is, the Callisto Suite. Hello? Lydia? Alfred, can you unlock the door? Indeed. I am able to override the door locks in the event of an emergency. I think this qualifies. Indeed. One moment, please. You armed? Yeah. Okay, then you take the left side, I'll take the right. Got it. Lydia! Oh! <coughs> oh no, that smell. <coughs> How do you get the lights on? There's a dial located on the wall to your left. I'll get it. <coughs> well, there she is. Alfred, we need you to put this whole place on lockdown. Nobody leaves their rooms until we get this resolved. No, that's a bad idea. Both deaths have taken place when the victim was alone in their room. Then what do you suggest? Don't isolate them. 
um, group them all together or mandate a body system. We need to make sure everyone is being watched, and since we can't keep eyes on them all the time, we might as well let them do it for us. Okay. You're right, that makes more sense. Alfred, can you make sure everyone stays put in the restaurant until we're finished here? Of course. I'm sorry, I just... Ugh, why didn't I see this coming? I should have known the killer might strike again. It doesn't look like we could have stopped it. What do you mean? I mean, it looks like she's been dead for days. The body has already gone through rigor mortis, which would likely place the time of death before we even boarded the train. Okay. So, we're looking at a possible double homicide, then? Double homicide, homicide followed by suicide... I won't know for sure until I can move my equipment from Damien's room and do a proper autopsy. Do you need help? I'll manage. You need to talk to the guests. <sighs> right. I suppose I do. Come on, Alfred. This isn't funny. Let us out. Regretfully, that is impossible. I am under orders to detain you. Orders? Whose orders? So there's been some confusion, and the staff isn't letting us leave the dining room. Not sure what the reason is. Alma, what's going on? I don't know, dear. I'm sure we'll find out soon. Hello, everyone? What is the meaning of this? Who are you? My name is Detective Buchanan, and I'm a private investigator looking into what we can now confirm to be two deaths what? that have taken place what? at this hotel. Uh, I'm afraid something's come up. I'll give another update soon. In broadcast. If this is a joke, it's in very poor taste. Are the rest of us in any danger? What was the cause of death? Based on our initial findings, we believe it was murder. <gasps> murder? Oh, poor Lydia. Have the authorities been notified? We are the authorities, and our biggest priority is ensuring the rest of your safety. So, if you have any leads or clues you can think of, let us know immediately. Also, for your protection, we are mandating all guests form a three-person buddy system. Regretfully, we are also going to have to mandate that any pre-existing parties that travel together will be placed in different groups. What? You can't do that! My wife and I are here for our honeymoon! I'm sorry. I really am. But we have no choice. This is an infringement on the liberties of all the occupants here. Quite right, Mr. Medina. The hotel and all activities are staying open, and no one is going anywhere. We just need to make sure everyone is protected and watching out for each other whilst the killer remains at large. Are you saying that one of us in this room is a killer? And we are going to have to stay with them? I wish there was a better option available, but both victims were killed while alone, and we don't want anyone else to make themselves a similar target. Now this is ludicrous! Absolutely outrageous! Absolutely! She's right, though. I agree. Like it or not, this is the safest way. That way we can all watch and protect each other. We should probably group the three women together and then... No! I'm not leaving my wife! Amani, dear, stay by my side. I'll watch over your wife. I promise no harm will come to her. And how can I trust you? I'm not letting my wife out of my sight when there's a killer on the loose. They can't enforce these rules. They're just trying to control us. Control us into being better protected? I'm fine with that. I agree with the detective. This is the best way. Who is the occupant of the Europa Suite? I am. Will you follow me to the conference room? I just have a few questions for you. Remember what we discussed the other evening, Miss Sinclair. Mr. Medina and I are more than happy to help. Yes, Mr. Walrath and I would be happy to provide any legal consultation or representation pro bono for anyone that wants it. I suppose we should start assigning groups then. Walking willingly into our own self-made prison, and thus the sheep go quietly to the slaughter. And what would you know of slaughter? Huh? Has it been on your mind recently? <sighs> it was a metaphor, dude. Do you know what a metaphor is? I am not a murderer. Well, someone here is. All right. Everyone, just calm down. 
I don't like this any more than any of you do. I came here for creative inspiration to sit by myself and reflect. But things changed, and now we have to decide how we're going to respond to that change. We should all stay together when possible, but like the detective said, when necessary, I think we should make sure that at least three people are always together. Agreed. We can alternate who goes with who, but let's make sure we all make it back home alive. I- I'm sorry, what's your name again? Moon Jin Wan. Okay, you can be in my group. Good. Now you, go stand over there and pick someone for your group. Finally, some peace and quiet. All that yelling was giving me a headache. You and me both. Please, have a seat, Miss Sinclair? Yes, Alice Sinclair. As she slowly sat down, I had a chance to give her a quick once-over. By the way she carried herself, you'd think she was seven feet tall. A giantess of a woman. A true matriarch. Her eyes were proud and defiant. But there was also pain and bitterness hidden in the corners of her genteel smile. She was struggling with the fact that she was past her prime. Your check-in records say you're from the Free Scottish State? Oh, that's a quaint way to say it. I was the principal investor in the movement. It'd be more accurate to say that I am the Free Scottish State. Oh, really? I'm sorry, I wasn't aware. Which is why I told you. I'm a businesswoman, and I'd appreciate it if we could get down to it. Do you believe I'm a suspect, Miss Buchanan? I have no reason to suspect you over anyone else, but you were in the room next to one of our victims, so I figured you'd be a good place to start. So, it was Lydia, then. Poor girl. I wondered why I hadn't seen her. Did you know her? We exchanged pleasantries. We're both avid swimmers, and we talked about visiting the low-gravity pool together. But then I didn't see her again. When was it you last saw her? Let me think. Days are a little harder to judge here than back home. Maybe four or five days ago? Did you try to check on her since then? No. I didn't travel 384,000 kilometers of emptiness to have my personal space invaded or to invade someone else's. My people have had quite enough of that over the centuries. What can you tell me about her? Is there anything you remember about what she was like or who she interacted with? Hmm. Now again, we only interacted a few times. But I could tell right away that she was feisty. Had that raw fire to her. Like she knew exactly what she wanted and didn't care who or what she had to go through to get it. Reminded me a bit of myself at that age. I think I would have liked to get to know her better. Hmm. With a personality like that, she's bound to have had a few enemies. Oh, undoubtedly. Even here she was ruffling some feathers. But I hate to spread rumors or stir up any trouble. I wouldn't want you or him thinking that's what I meant. Miss Sinclair, any possible leads or information you can give me will help tremendously. I'll deal with the consequences. Oliver Percy. They were in the same line of work, you know. Travel journalism. And I could tell she made him uncomfortable. How so? Oh, dear girl. In the way all headstrong women make men uncomfortable. Like we're a threat. And are you a threat? Oh, yes. I can be. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. I can endanger anyone's career, reputation, or even their political life. But I didn't kill anyone. Mm Mm-hmm. And what about the other victim, Damien Detweiler? Do you know anything about him? No. Never even heard the name before. And I must confess, I thought that was rather odd. How so? Because if you're someone worth knowing about... Bianca Buchanan, then I know who you are. I see. 
And where were you the night of the 23rd? I was in the pool. There was no one else there, except for the pool attendant droid. I would assume they keep some kind of records that can validate my story. Okay. One last question, if I may. Go ahead. Why did you come to the moon? I have always been fascinated by the signs of the heavens, like the ancient druids before me. But unlike them, I have the ability and means to actually travel here. Plus, I wanted to see if the lower gravity would help my arthritis. Thank you for your time, Miss Sinclair. I'll be in touch if I have any more questions. Of course, Detective. It's been a blast. Who's there? It's me, Bianca. I brought you another salad. You didn't really get a chance to eat much before. Just set it on the floor over there. I haven't totally finished dusting the furniture for Prince yet. Sure. How's it looking so far? Time of death is only shortly after Damien's, about four days ago. I took a CT scan and loaded the results into my VAT. I'm sorry, what's a VAT? Oh, um, virtual autopsy table. It confirmed my initial conclusion that she was killed by manual strangulation. The hyoid bone in the neck has been crushed. No other injuries are present on the body, and no sign of a struggle in the room either. Also, I pulled some preliminary prints and... Well, here, I'll, um, I'll just show you. Do any of these look similar? Um, those two look identical. You're sure? Yeah, pretty positive. Right, that's what I thought too. Um, this one here is the one I pulled off one of the wine glasses. And that one I got from Damien when I initially took his prints. So he and Lydia knew each other. Oh, well, we're getting to at least. And then they were both killed. One stabbed and the other strangled. Exactly. It's not the same MO. And I was And thinking... you'd expect a more consistent behavior if the killings were premeditated. So what are our options? I suppose there could be an accomplice or multiple killers. But how likely is it that out of 11 people that come to the moon, two would be murderers? Normally, not very. But with this many ruthless, super-rich egomaniacs in one place, I suppose anything is possible. The wealthy wouldn't kill for business, though. They'd hire others for that. It would have to be personal to get them to commit murder themselves. Like a love triangle? Possibly. And if it wasn't premeditated, then it was reactionary. Unlikely with whatever implements the killer had available to them at the time. Have you been able to find the weapon used to kill Damien? Not yet. It's a lead I haven't had a chance to pursue. And I can't do everything at once. No, you're doing great work. If you want my help with anything, just let me know. I think I'm going to clean up here and then go back to my room and bunk down for a few hours. Then I'll track down Alfred and let him show me the security footage. <sighs> Sleep sounds like a good idea. I'm going to have another chat first, though. Don't forget your salad. I wanted to follow up on the lead Miss Sinclair had given me, so I went to find Oliver Percy. I'd seen his travel show, All Over with Oliver, a few times, late at night when I couldn't sleep. He seemed like a sensible man, assertive, distinguished, and old-fashioned. I was hoping he could shed some light on just who Lydia was and see for myself if any connections could be found. I still don't understand the purpose of a weight room in low gravity. <clears throat> the machines are supposedly compensated for it, but yeah, I'm not sure I do either. That's what I'm trying to find out. Raymond, could you put some more weight on? Oh, of course. Ugh. <clears throat> uh. This seems like such an extraneous waste of effort. You should try. Maybe to change your mind. Uh, no, thank you. I'm fine here. There you go. You know, my uh, partner, Mr. Walrath, 
and I would be more than happy to spot for you legally as well, should you so require it. Excuse me, gentlemen. Detective? What can we do for you? I was wondering if I might have a word with Mr. Percy. Oh, of course. Uh, Mr. Percy, don't forget. What's this about? Just wanted to ask you a few questions. Would you like to sit down? I'd prefer to stand, actually. Okay. Well, do you mind if I sit? That's entirely your prerogative. <sighs> Hotel records show you were not charged for your stay. I was provided a complimentary admittance in exchange for a fair review. It's quite an honor to be given that opportunity. Not many people get to experience this. And it appears even less will live to tell about it. Indeed. And that brings me to my main point. I wanted to ask you about Lydia Swalwell. What about her? She was one of the victims. Yes, I know. Why do you think I would know anything about it? Well, the two of you were in the same line of work, correct? I thought you could tell me a little bit about who she was and who might have wanted to kill her. Well, first of all, let's set the record straight. We weren't in the same line of work. I'm a resort critic. She was a travel journalist. That's a big difference. Oh, my mistake. No, I don't think it was. I know you've talked to Alice. She pointed you in my direction, didn't she? What makes you think she would do that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because she's a founder of the Free Scottish State, and I'm one of those evil Brits. She probably fed you some little hints, acting all innocent, like she didn't want to stir the pot. I'll tell you something. That woman has never met a pot she didn't want to stir in her entire life. One of the proudest, most contentious people I've ever met. How well do you know Miss Sinclair? I don't have to know her. I read the news. Maybe it doesn't make it all the way across the pond where you live, but in what's left of my country, we know what she does. And so you're saying any alleged tip I received was politically charged and had nothing to do with you and Lydia being rivals in, if not the same, then at least a similar line of work? It wouldn't be outside of her wheelhouse. Did you know that the Free State draws some of its heritage from old terrorist organizations? There are elements within that government that hate the English. Can you answer my question, please? I'll do you one better. I'll answer the questions you should be asking. Did I respect Lydia as a colleague? Of course I did. She made something of herself in an industry that's well nigh impossible to crack. I respect that. I do. Does that mean that I liked her as a person? No! Am I astounded that anyone liked her at all? Positively baffled. She was abrasive, rude, and arrogant. I found her personality to be grating and uncouth. But did I somehow feel so threatened by her presence that I decided to murder her? Absolutely not. It shouldn't be hard to see that those are not mutually exclusive things. Why do you think she was killed? Like I said, maybe because someone else got fed up with her domineering and dismissive attitude. Maybe for some other reason. I don't know. Okay. What about Damien Detweiler? Did you know him? No, not at all. Didn't know him previously, and didn't make an effort to get to know him here. And where were you Wednesday night? I was in my room, organizing my notes. I had a hotel to experience and a review to write. And fortunately for you, now that Lydia's dead, that review will be the only one available for the most cutting-edge resort ever built. I'm sure that will drive a lot of traffic to your platform. Look here! I'm trying to be as helpful as possible. There's a killer on the loose, and we might all be in danger, so I want to help you get to the bottom of this. But I'm not stupid. I've been consulted by Mr. Walrath and Mr. Martina, and if you keep using that tone, twisting my words, assuming my guilt, or pushing my buttons to see what reaction you get, then you can forget about my cooperation and I won't say another bloody thing without their presence as my lawyers. Is that clear? I don't take ultimatums from suspects. Thank you for your time, Mr. Percy. I will be in touch if I need anything else.
I have no doubt. I sat in the empty room for a while, thinking. I knew I'd pushed him hard, but I needed to see how he'd react when threatened. If Alice and Claire could be likened to a staring pot, then Oliver Percy was definitely the boiling kettle. But aside from their ancestral feuds, there didn't seem to be any evidence of their involvement. One thing I knew for sure, though. The lawyers were going to be a problem. I'd need a full night of sleep before I was ready to deal with them. As I walked back to my room, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I wasn't sure if it was my investigative instinct, or female intuition, but I felt eyes boring into the back of my skull. I turned around, and thought I saw a shadow disappear past a corner. I quickly walked back in that direction and scanned the hallway. It was empty. Maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me. I hadn't slept much on the trip here, and was overdue for some shut-eye. I returned to my room without incident, but locked the door all the same. There was still a murderer out there, and I could only hope they wouldn't strike again. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with us at Heaven's Gate Resort and Hotel. We are truly honored by your presence, and hope you've enjoyed your visit thus far. This experience was envisioned by Richard C. Mills and Jordan H. Mills, and was brought to life by the vocal talents of Marta De Silva, Lofty Fulton, David Alt, June Yoon, Joanna Tope, Antonio King, Sasha Mazakowski, Ethan Carlson, Andy Harvey, Daniel Cross, Hisham El Shazli, and Alexandra Grace Willoughby, with additional performances by Joseph Narducci, Nato Jacobson, Laura Ridgecreek, Georgia McKenzie, Sean Condy, Hannah Glavin, J.K. Robbins, Randy Strew, Vinay Nariani, Bjorn Munson, Chaz Alberti, and Nathaniel Battaglia. Casting assistance provided by June Yoon and Jasmine Sabri, and recording assistance by Tom Service and Rami Hussein. Editing by Christian Carlson and Richard C. Mills, with sound design and engineering by Richard C. Mills and Dane Leonardson. Musical score created and produced by the IB Oral team, with original compositions by Alexi Gala, sound design, mix and master by Edgar Ibarra, and music management by Juan Jimenez, with Luna Concert music written and performed by Sasha Mazakowski. Artwork and graphic design by Jordan H. Mills. And of course, none of this would be possible without the generous support of our patrons, including Rich and Jeanette Mills, William and Sharon Heath, Eric Carlson, Chaz Alberti, and Nathaniel Battaglia. If you've enjoyed your time here, we'd like to encourage you to rate and review your stay. And on behalf of all the creators and staff, we want to thank you for choosing Heaven's Gate Resort and Hotel. We hope you'll visit again soon.